Welcome, one and all. Sisters, brothers, fathers, mothers, to another one of my special wizard tales. Anastasia. In the year 1918, a revolution took place in Russia. Cities were destroyed, and the revolutionary Bolsheviks gained control after they brutally executed the Emperor Nicholas Romanov and his entire royal family. Well, almost the entire family. Miraculously, one member of royalty did manage to escape the fate of her family. And now, with the help of her loyal guardian Leon, Princess Anastasia was being smuggled out of the city to safety. Not much longer, your highness, and we'll be out of the city. Leon assured the still unconscious princess. They raced through the gunfire at the burning city and didn't stop until they reached the countryside, where Leon had arranged to meet friendly loyalists who would keep Princess Anastasia safe until his return. What Leon didn't know was that the Bolsheviks were now going after every loyal follower of the royal family. He too now was a wanted man. At the special meeting place, Leon stopped the cart and signaled to Anastasia's new caretakers, Boris and Grigoria Popolovich. Boris and Grigoria came out of the bushes, trudging through deep snow, leading a horse for Leon. We thought you never come. What took you so long? snapped Gregoria. Leon attempted to explain, but quickly shifted the concern to the princess. Uh, still unconscious. She will need to be nursed carefully. She has a nasty blow to the head. It is a miracle she is still alive. Remember, no one must know who she is. Just as Boris assured Leon that the princess would have only the best of care, Gregoria jabbed him in the ribs. The money, Boris. Remind him about the money, she insisted. Leon promptly produced a bag of gold coins, which he quickly snatched out of his hand. There'll be more when I return, assured Leon. Leon watched as they disappeared down the road, with Gregoria bouncing up and down on the back of the cart. Slower, Boris. Oh, watch that bump, Boris. Oh, Boris. Boris! Oh, careful, Boris! She screamed. When they finally arrived at the farmhouse, Gregoria ordered Boris to prepare her a hot bath. With absolutely no respect or concern for the injured princess. The princess can wait! Now, get inside and light fire! She ordered. After Gregoria was settled comfortably in her hot bath, Boris was finally able to carry Anastasia to her bedroom a converted storeroom that was also home to a nosy little mouse. Anastasia finally woke up with tremendous pain in her head and a beautiful Fabergé egg on a gold chain in her hand. She was terribly confused and had no idea where she was. Anastasia hid the egg in her bed when she heard heavy footsteps coming her way. A bot time. Just because you have bump on head does not mean you can sleep the rest of your life away, shouted Gregoria. Now even more confused, Anastasia replied, My head, I can't remember. Where am I? Who am I? Gregoria grinned wickedly. She told Anastasia that her name was Anna Popolovich and that she bumped her head when she fell out of a tree. Yes, I am your dear mother. Yes, it all come back soon enough. Now, come on, on your feet. There's work to do. The potatoes need digging. Oh, and the pigs, they are starving. Continued Gregoria as she yanked the bandage right off Anastasia's head. Anastasia was shocked. She found this story hard to believe, but didn't have much of a choice. So she got dressed in her peasant clothes and made her way to feed the pigs. Oh, what a life for a princess. Getting up with the chickens, feeding the pigs and doing the chores. If Anastasia overslept for even one minute, Gregoria would drag her out of bed. 
The only comfort that Anastasia had was in her jeweled egg and in her dreams. Oh, beautiful egg. Why is it that you seem so special to me? Somehow, I remember you when I remember nothing else. I wish I could remember. I wish I... Sighed Anastasia as pictures of a royal family and life in a grand palace began to appear vaguely in her mind. Anastasia woke suddenly to a knock on her door. She quickly hid the egg as Boris entered. He was a kind man, and although he too was afraid of Gregoria, wanted to assure Anastasia that things would get better. I am so sorry about the way my wife treats you. Just remember, I am always your friend, he said as he wished her a good night. Now months had gone by, and Anastasia was feeling terribly lonely. One day, while picking acorns in the forest, she suddenly spotted a band of soldiers marching down the road to water. The frightened Anastasia hurled herself to the ground to hide in the tall grass. After the danger had passed, she looked up, only to be staring in the eyes of a baby wolf. Startled, she backed away slowly, with a growling little wolf following her. <laughs> oh, you're just a baby. Come on, little one. I won't hurt you, laughed Anastasia when she realized there was nothing to be afraid of. She held her hand out to the cub and then picked him up. Oh, you're coming with me, little cub. You will be my new friend and I'll be yours. I think I'll call you... Um... Nikki. Gregoria certainly did not approve of Nikki, but let him stay anyway when she thought it might be worth more money from Leon when he returned. Oh, very well. He can stay. On the proviso, he never come in house, she growled. Of course, Anastasia just could not bear to leave him outside, much to the surprise of the mouse. One day, while playing in the forest, Nikki disappeared into some frightful-looking bushes. Anastasia rushed through the thicket after him and spotted a wicked-looking steel trap. No! A wolf trap! Nikki! Nikki! She cried after she heard a horrifying snap of the trap. She rushed through the foliage, and much to her surprise and relief, Nikki was unharmed, but growling fiercely at a boy with his trouser leg caught in the trap. Asked Anastasia as she proceeded to pry open the trap with a stick. I'll be better if you call the dog off. He replied as he freed himself from the trap. Just then a falcon swooped down and landed on the boy's arm. My falcon, Pirosh. I am Alexander. What is your name? He asked. I am called Anna. She replied. Alexander wanted to express his gratitude to Anastasia and asked her to join him and his father for tea in the evening. Gregoria simply would not hear of it. What do you mean, come to pick up my daughter? She asked Alexander and his father Vladimir when they arrived that evening. Gregoria went on to deny having a daughter and abruptly sent them on their way. Anastasia could not believe what she was hearing. She tossed her shoe at the two men as they walked toward their car. I do live here. And... I think my name is Anna. Something is very wrong. Oh, please, please help me, she whispered. Then with Alexander's help, she escaped through the window. We'll take you back to our cottage and see if we can't get through the bottom of this, assured Vladimir as they drove off. Inside the cottage, Anastasia was explaining her situation when she noticed that Vladimir was sporting a Fabergé egg hanging from his fob watch chain. She gasped in surprise. Your egg! I have one almost identical to that. Vladimir found that hard to believe. These jeweled eggs were only for the royal family and their inner circle, he said accusingly. Just as she revealed her egg, Alexander produced a picture of the royal family. The egg in the royal photograph is identical to the one Anna is wearing, and... Oh, you won't believe this, but... The girl wearing it is Princess Anastasia. It is Anna, he declared. 
Both men fell to their knees in respect to the princess, as Anna's memory began to return. Yes, I am Princess Anastasia. Oh, I remember now. Oh. She proclaimed. But her happiness quickly turned to tears, as she recalled the fate of her family. She was even more saddened at the news of Leon's capture, and now realized her own danger. Immediately, they made a plan to escape out of the country to Vienna. Alexander and Anastasia packed the cart and were off, leaving Vladimir behind to fend off the Bolsheviks if they should come. This was not going to be an easy trip. First, their path almost collided with Gregoria. Just as they had suspected, she was on her way to inform the Bolsheviks about the surviving princess. Well on their way into the journey, they hit a rock and lost a wheel. Just then, two Bolshevik lieutenants pulled up and helped to fix the wheel. As she climbed into the cart, Anastasia accidentally dropped her Fabergé egg right at the feet of the Bolsheviks, who immediately recognized the royal Romanov egg. Seize them! They are traitors to the new Russia! Screamed one lieutenant. Alexander reared the horse and escaped at full speed leaving the Bolsheviks in their dust with a stalled motorbike. Just outside the city, where they were to meet their escort who would take them across the border, the cartwheel fell off again. They decided to walk the rest of the way and headed off into the forest, where they encountered a huge, ferocious black bear. They screamed and ran with the bear at their heels. In an attempt to distract the bear, Karash dove into a beehive to steal a honeycomb and powered off toward the bear with a swarm of angry bees in pursuit. Meanwhile, the two Bolshevik lieutenants pulled up on their smoking motorbike behind the broken car. They saw Anastasia and Alexander, but not the bear, running through the forest and dashed off in an attempt to cut them off. Anastasia tripped and fell right in front of the bear. But just in time, Parash zoomed over the bear with the honeycomb dripping from his paws. The bear could not resist the sweet honey and followed the falcon and the bees in the direction of the two Bolsheviks. Parash then cleverly tossed the honeycomb at one of the Bolsheviks who caught it right on his head, bees and all. The bear chased them both deep into the forest and Anastasia and Alexander escaped once again, <laughs> laughing all the way. They finally met with their escort, Pierre, who was ready to drive them over the border. Not far into the journey, the battered but seemingly indestructible Bolsheviks caught up to them one more time. Pierre raced off, but could not shake the pursuing Bolsheviks. Suddenly they arrived at a railway with a train stopped at the crossing. I have no choice, informed Pierre. The Bolsheviks stopped behind them and pulled out their guns in an attempt to finally arrest them. Miraculously, two men stepped off the train to intimidate the Bolsheviks. Hey, Bolshe boys! Welcome to Austria! On your bike, Bolsheviks! They exclaimed. The Bolsheviks had no choice now, they had to retreat. Just then, Anastasia recognized one of the men. Boris, is, is that you? She asked. Princess Anastasia. Guten Tag. Welcome to Austria. He replied in his best Austrian accent. Oh, guten Tag, Boris. Welcome to Austria. Sighed the relieved princess. Even the mouse had the chance to escape. He popped out of Boris's bag to have a look at his new country. Brothers, fathers, mothers, join me again soon for another classic tale, won't you?